Hello again, and welcome back to Operations Management. We're continuing our series on the seven tools of quality, and this time we're going to be talking about scatter diagrams. Scatter diagrams are also known as scatter plots or scatter charts. Those terms are used interchangeably. In essence, what we're doing is we're plotting two variables against each other on a graph to look for a relationship between those variables. So to use a scatter plot, we're trying to think, are two variables related? We plot those variable coordinates on a graph, and then we look for trends and possible correlation between those variables. So let's see what a couple of these plots look like. Here we have one on the left that shows a relationship between car weight and gas mileage. The weight of the car is being represented by the x-axis, and the y-axis represents the gas mileage. Using x-y coordinates, for each car weight, there's a corresponding gas mileage. And it's plotted there on the chart. And it looks kind of scattered, and that's why it's called a scatter plot. But even though they're kind of spread out, we can see that there's some sort of relationship between them, and that it kind of looks like as the weight of a car increases, the gas mileage will decrease. The plot on the right is showing the relationship between the stopping distance of a vehicle and how fast it's traveling. The speed is being shown on the x-axis, the stopping distance on the y-axis, and just like with the car weight one, we have little dots that are scattered across this chart for each vehicle speed with its stopping distance. And again, we can kind of see that there is a relationship between these two variables that this time as the speed increases, so will the stopping distance. To help us look at this a little better, we can add trend lines. These trend lines are linear lines that show a relationship between these two variables. We don't expect the trend line to fit exactly to those dots, but it does take all those dots into consideration and creates a linear line. So what does all of this mean? Well, if the trend line goes down, it shows that there is a negative correlation between variables. Negative meaning as one variable increases, the other one decreases. So in the case of the car weight going up, that means the gas mileage goes down. The trend line going up means that there's a positive correlation between the variables, which means as one variable increases, so will the other one. As the speed increased on the vehicle, so did the stopping distance. Now there can be other possibilities. There can be no correlation, there can be cyclical, there can be patterns. There are all sorts of things that can happen with scatter plots, and I just showed you a couple of them. But how do we go about making a scatter plot? Well, in Excel, we would enter the data into two columns, one representing the X coordinate and the other one representing the Y coordinate. So in this case, if we had a batch size and the number of defects, we would have the batch size as one coordinate and defects as the other. Once that's in place, we would select the X, Y, or scatter plot from chart tools, and it would create the chart for us. And then we can edit it to add the axis titles. And you can see those data points sitting there on the chart. Then we would add a trend line or in addition to that, we can add the R squared, which is the coefficient of determination. And that trend line typically will start with a linear trend. That's the default. And that shows how that relationship works. So in this case, as batch size increases, so will the number of defects. It's a positive line going upwards. And so we have a positive relationship between those two variables. When we look at the R squared, the coefficient of determination, it must fall between zero and one. And the higher the value, it indicates that that trend line that we added explains the relationship between the variables. We can also look at the correlation coefficient, which is R, which is also known as the square root of the coefficient of determination. The greater the value of R, the stronger the relationship is between those two variables. So we consider it's strong if it's greater than 0.8, and if it's less than 0.5, we consider it weak. 
So that's all there is to scatter plots. We are looking at a relationship between two variables and seeing what that relationship is. And I'll see you next time when we look at another one of those seven tools of quality. Take care.